Everyone, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you taking a little time out uh, as we <clears throat> try to promote the opener tomorrow. I've got Coach ready. Coach, take it away, and then uh, use the raise hand function, please, and I will call on you. We'll make it as efficient as possible. Go ahead, Coach. Yeah, appreciate everybody's time on a Sunday. You know, first of all, about the game, first game ever in the Moody Center. So we're looking forward to being a part, you know, of kind of a historical night. Um, obviously, game changer for Texas basketball, having an on-campus arena uh, with student-friendly seats. Um, appreciate everybody's patience with the exhibition game. Obviously, it's a work in progress. They'll try to figure out the parking and all the logistics around the game. Uh, but I know this, it's going to be a great opening game in college basketball. Um, students have the best seats in the place. The doors open 90 minutes before the game for students, one hour before the game for our season ticket holders. All sorts of things going on in this game. First 2,000 students get the Matthew McConaughey kind of bless the mood t-shirt. First 1,500 students are getting uh, fed um, by one of the great Austin eateries and um, just looking forward to it. Encourage season ticket holders to please be in their seats early, wear orange, stay late. You know, it's an exciting night for so many reasons with the new arena. More importantly to me uh, is the basketball game. And I think uh, we felt the responsibility to bring in a quality opponent for the first game ever in the Moody. And um, it's not your typical kind of first game. You know, UTEP is an NCAA tournament hopeful. Uh, in my in my opinion, Joe Golding's one of the best coaches in college basketball. Austin people are familiar with his ACU team. Last year, his first UTEP team was very good, won 20 games, made it to the postseason, uh, benefited from the culture and players that Rodney Terry left behind. Now Joe's putting his own spin on it. An older, experienced team comes in here, a lot of portal players. They returned three players from the 20-win team last year, and then a lot of all-conference older guys in college basketball. They don't play any freshmen in tomorrow night's game. So Coach Golding's teams have always been known for pressure defense and aggressive offense. So it's a quality first opponent. Um, we look forward to it. Obviously, the tradition of the UTEP name um, means a lot. You know, three teams in Texas have played for the national championship. Two of them have won it. And UTEP with Coach Haskins uh, were the first to do that. So we have a lot of respect for UTEP's history, UTEP's program, UTEP's basketball, and then certainly with their current team and current coach. Uh, we'll have to play well tomorrow night to win the first game of the season. Thanks, Coach Roger Wallace. Go ahead. Hey, Chris, you can coach a long time and not get the chance to open a new arena. How, how cool is that for you? And maybe more significantly, players only get four or five years. So the odds of them opening a new arena is, is even lower. But then again, as you said, you don't want to get caught kind of looking around and, and get hit in the face, too. Yes, and yes. You know, I think uh, there's no denying that it's a uh, it's not your normal night. It's definitely got an asterisk next to it. I know every place I've ever coached or every place I've ever uh, gone into, there's always kind of that picture of the first game ever in the arena. And so um, I don't think there's no denying that, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a normal game. It's a, it's a historical night. So I think, number one, you embrace that. You know, it's a lot like playing in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you don't tell your team in the NCAA tournament, hey, here we go, it's the, the next game. I mean, you, you explain to the team this is different. Um, so this is different. So I think we'll, um, we've done a good job. I, I feel like telling our players how big this opportunity is. There's going to be a lot of, uh, um, you know, stuff around the game. I think it's really important for us to focus in and play the 40 minute game um, with the game in hand. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to play well opening night. We're going to have young guys on the court. We're going to have new guys on the court. So a lot of things going against us in this game. We just got to make sure that we focus and take advantage of all the things that are going for us. Nick Morrill, go ahead, please. Yeah, Chris, wanted to ask specifically about uh, Rowan. I, I noticed he didn't play in the exhibition. Um, are you are you maybe thinking about preserving his red shirt for this season, or maybe bringing him along a little slower? Just curious on you know maybe what the plan and the outlook is for him. Yeah, as we sit here today, that is the plan uh, to red shirt Rowan, um, but there's a little bit of a time frame and those decisions to be made. So Rowan continues to practice full speed, full time. Uh, but as of right now, um, that, that was kind of Rowan's decision uh, to do that. But we'll kind of keep you guys up to date. You know, sometimes those things can change in the first days and weeks of the season. Um, but Rowan will not play in tomorrow night's game. And we just kind of keep that thing going. Um, he's going to be an outstanding player, uh, obviously, with with Tyrese Terrio in that backcourt right now and Rice, a veteran, um, and Marcus Carr. 
Um, I think the decision was made not only for 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 Rowan's future, um, but really for for Rowan's present as well. Kirk Falls, go ahead, please. Yeah, Chris, I don't know if you're the sentimental, nostalgic type, but uh, I don't know if this is going to be kind of a Hoosiers moment uh, tomorrow. But uh, is this is this more than your average gym? Would you say? I think so. You know, I think we tell the guys all the time, let's uh, live in reality and tell each other the truth and let's don't uh, underestimate things. It's kind of like when Texas goes on the road, we understand what we're getting into and we would, we would try to, we would rather talk about it more than, than not talk about it at all. So, um, but yeah, tomorrow night, there's a lot of things around this game. You're opening a brand new arena in the capital city on the campus. We're playing a quality opponent. Um, so I think once once the ball goes up, you know, you forget about all that stuff. But I have spent some extra time and effort trying to make sure the guys understand what we're getting into. Yeah, I was going to I was going to ask you, too. What are the players saying about the gym, but what they like and maybe dislike and what they're going to have to get used to as far as Moody? Yeah, I definitely haven't heard any dislikes. Um, you know, there's some challenges with, you know, things like the parking and things like that. But uh you know, you're living in Austin, you're living in the capital city and urban areas. So there's some challenges, but definitely not any negatives, just trying to learn how to new routine. Um, you know, we'd, we'd have much rather made this move kind of in the off season, but to make it kind of right before the season starts, that's been a challenge. But look, it's all been positive. The, the players love the new facility, also the new practice facility. Everything's been great, period. Um, and I think just tomorrow, again, just the challenges of the game. Um, you know, we got to make sure that we focus on the 40 minute game, not all the things around the game in terms of the positives. I mean, it's just, I think we're all excited to, to have the student section more connected. Um, I think we're all excited to have um, the arena in a place where the students can walk from West campus and not have to cross uh, MLK and all that. It's always a challenge with the Irwin center. So uh, lots of positives, no doubt. Mark Rosner, go ahead, please remind her to use the raise hand function, to ask a question. Yeah, Chris, does the uh, people talk about the steep seating in the building as an advantage? Are there, does it remind you of any college or pro arenas you've been in? Off the top of my head, no. I mean, I think it's just such a unique place. Um, but obviously having the student section behind both benches and on the end zones, we've, um, you know, we've been a part of that before, a lot of the great venues. Uh, it's hard to hear yourself during timeouts on the road because of where they put the student section. Um, you know, I just think the, the the outlay, obviously, of of the arch of the building. I mean, so there's some common things. I know uh, Oklahoma State's a place we've always enjoyed playing over the years because of the basketball environment. And I think the Moody Center has a chance to do that. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. We're still building it. It's obviously not going to be a finished product game one, but I think even in the Arkansas exhibition the other day, it was easy to see the glaring positives. Uh, is there work? Absolutely. Uh, but I think we're starting at a great spot. Thank you. <clears throat> Terry Middleton, go ahead, please. Coach Beard, you know, um, after watching the first game against Arkansas, it was evident that the chemistry of this team, they're, they're, they're gelled. How, you know, how did you go out and know that Hunter or Morris or Rice were going to gel with your team? I mean, the chemistry that they have, of course, they're great basketball players, but they had to work well with Carr and Dylan. And I've got enough of that question to understand. Uh, you know, our team's a work in progress. Um, I think, it, you know, during the 40 minute game against Arkansas, I think there was a lot of positives, but we're not a finished product whatsoever. I think every team has to continue to gel as the season goes on, even returning teams, a team that returns every player, every season's different. Um, I think kind of the way we do it is we just try to be very transparent. You know, our current players help us in recruiting. Um, we listen more than we talk. Uh, you know, we make sure that we we're, we're not only putting a team together that has great talent, but also pieces that fit. Uh, the objective isn't to just go out and get the best pieces. It's to get the pieces that fit. And I know no other way to describe it than the old coaching cliche, putting the puzzle together. It really is like that. Um, so I agree with you. I think this year's team's got a real chance. Uh, there's some real positives in our closed door scrimmage and our exhibition, uh, but we'll see how it goes tomorrow night when these lights come on. 
Tyler Feldman, go ahead, please. Hey, Chris, thanks for taking the time this afternoon. My question is, what is your favorite part about the Moody Center that does not pertain to on the court stuff? Maybe a behind the scenes aspect of the arena that that you've kind of noticed and enjoy. Well, again, I just love the location. I mean, you can be outside it and see the students kind of walking to and from class around the football stadium. The rec center is right next to it, which is one of the center parts of campus. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, when, when you're at the Moody, you feel like you're on campus because you are. There's an energy around it really based on the students being around a lot more than they were uh, at the Irwin Center. And you guys know that I love the Irwin Center, part of my part of my history personally as well. Um, I think inside the building, it's just always so, so many cool venues. I love the fact that it has the Austin vibe. A lot of the eateries are locally owned. It's not the typical concession stand that we all grew up going to. So in all the details, whether it be the, uh, you know, the Capital City kind of art, the local flavor, all in the uh, the gym. Because of the access and all the rooms, we're able to do things like pregame meals and we're able to do team meetings. There's a lot of cool areas in the Moody that aren't necessarily the court. Um, so, you know, we're blessed to have, you know, one of, if not the best uh, basketball facility in the world now, and and we're tending on taking advantage of it. Nick Moore, I'll go ahead. Yeah, Chris, when we were talking to Dylan the other day, he was just kind of talking about how you know, hard Brock played in practice and how in turn he made everybody else play harder in practice, you know, especially on a team with, you know, four freshmen, a couple guys that you want to contribute early. I guess how important is it to have a guy like Brock maybe set that example for everyone else, especially those younger dudes? Yeah, Dylan DeSue or Dylan Mitchell? Uh, Mitchell. Yeah. No, I think, uh, you know, Brock's a big part of our team. Everybody knows that, but what most people don't know is that he's an everyday guy. You know, it's not like he plays really hard just on game night. It doesn't matter if it's pre-practice walkthrough or post-practice shooting. I mean, Brock's going to go hard. And I think one of the reasons we're, uh, you know, excited and optimistic right now is we've got some guys that are in Brock's neighborhood. Christian Bishop's been a guy that's defined himself his whole career as being a hard-playing guy, and I can go down the line. So, um, you know, I think when Texas basketball has several Brock Cunningham types competitors in it, we have a chance to take the next step. Um, Brock is one of the all time great competitors and he values every possession. He knows who he is. He plays extremely hard and he elevates the level of play. Um, and that's a great thing for freshmen to come to a place like Texas. And you can not only learn from, you know, the coaches and the organization, but also just learn from the players. And um, you know, I think that very first pickup game this summer when our talent, the freshmen, you know, tried to block out Brock Cunningham for the first time, you know, it was eye opening for them. Last one's to Kirk Bowles. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Chris, uh, I wonder how the players feel about the the shooting backgrounds and the sight lines at all. I know a lot of uh, basketball players don't like playing at dome stadiums. I wonder if there's anything uh, peculiar about that. And do the players know where the dead spots on the floor are yet? Yeah, we're learning the dead spots for sure. Uh, it's something all basketball people kind of know, and you, you use it to your advantage. Um, mm -hmm. I think the lighting, when we first – in there this spring and we were shooting it was kind of new to everybody but it really has become home now we've we've been in there enough and shot enough there's some unique things like with the moet room on that one end and some of the lights and stuff but uh it's no different than every gym you know every gym has its own scene every gym's not the same so our thing is to try to make this into a home court advantage as soon as possible um definitely no complaints or anything like that though just getting kind of used to playing with it the natural light comes in comes some sides some of the areas are curtained off. So it's a unique venue as all the venues are. And I think, uh, you know, hopefully the plan is to turn it into a home court advantage. We're in the early stages of doing that, but we're working at it. Um, but everything from the player's point of view has been positive. Like we're just super excited to be there, super excited to be in the practice facility, uh, super excited that our students have the best seats in the place. And uh, we just look forward to a great night tomorrow night again against a quality opponent. Uh, I think um, you guys will see that here in a few hours. UTEP is good. Got a good coach and good players. It's going to be a great test for us opening night. Kirk, any last follow-up? Yeah, I was going to about the champagne room. There was talk about the light shining through the backboard while you're shooting free throws. Is that – are the lights going to be off of the champagne room? Has it been like that? I, I thought the same thing, Kirk. Me and you talked about that. And uh, we yeah. went in there the next day and kind of looked at it. Uh, it's a lit up. Uh, sweet, no doubt about it. I've actually been up there for a concert. It's an awesome place. 
Uh, but I don't think it'll affect the free throw shooting and things like that. We've spent a lot of time uh, looking at that kind of stuff. But I, I had the same concern uh, when I saw it, but it, it hasn't materialized like you and I thought it might. Oh, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, See you guys tomorrow night. Thanks,